Hey there, this is Math 7. We're on Unit 4, Lesson 13 today, looking at measurement error. Okay, so we're going to talk about using percentages to describe how accurately we can measure. <laughs> because sometimes when you're doing measurements, what you find is that depending upon the tool they give you, like you'll use this one today and this one today for an activity, the tool they give you will allow you to become more precise in your measurement depending upon which one it is. So for example, the millimeter ruler here is going to let me measure something to the nearest millimeter, whereas up here I'm going to have to get to the closest centimeter or estimate how long something might be. Okay, So what we're going to be looking at today is a series of uh, measurements and then finding out what the measurement error is going to be. That's going to be a percentage of uh, the difference what's happening here. Let's take a look here first of all. First, we had a little section where it said you have a line segment A, B, C, and D, and it wanted you to measure it with the different rulers, okay? And so you had a line segment like this guy right here, right? And it wanted you to measure it with the two different rulers. And so if I measure with a centimeter ruler, line segment A, okay, I can put this down right about here, and I notice that I get somewhere near about seven, but if I'm gonna estimate and get to the closest uh, a centimeter, I would say this is about a length of seven, right? So it looks like seven right there for seven centimeters. But if I was to take the millimeter ruler here and lay that down right there, I can get something closer to six. And it looks like we're here at about 0.7. So I would say 6.7 centimeters, right? And so the idea is that because the measure, the ruler gets you a more precise reading, there's gonna be a difference in the two lengths. So line segment A, with the first ruler, we would say is about seven centimeters, but with the second one, because we're more precise, we would say it's 6.7 centimeters, okay? And you do that same thing with B and C as well with your rulers, and you can measure those out to see what you get, okay? And for the most part, what you find is, oh, well, let's take a look here. Let's do the centimeter one first of all. So if I look at B, B is still about seven centimeters and C is also still near closest to about seven centimeters, right? So I jot that down on my table and I would say it's about seven centimeters, seven centimeters for both of those. But we know just by looking at those lines, they're not all the same length, are they? These are different lengths. And so precision is really important for us here and the centimeter ruler just isn't gonna quite cut it, is it? So when I take the millimeter ruler here and line that up, I can see with this one, I'm at about 6.9, and I can see with, with letter C that I am at about, let's see, more than seven, huh? Looks like I'm going up to about 7.3, one, two, three. Okay, so I jot those down. I have about 6.9 and 7.3. Okay, and again, those are just the measurements using the two different rulers there. So measurement error can occur depending upon how precisely we can measure an object, right? This is gonna be a measurement error of some amount. Well, that measurement error, and what we're looking at today is, what's that difference or what's that percentage compared to the actual measurement? If the actual measurement is 6.7 centimeters and you said it was seven centimeters, then you're off a little bit, right? And that off a little bit, we're gonna talk about is that measurement error and we're gonna make that into a percentage today. So let's take a look at that, uh, activity number two. Focus real quick, make sure it's clear. There we go, that'll work. So the soccer field is 120 yards long. Han measures the length of the field using a 30 foot long tape measure he gets and measures 358 feet and 10 inches. What is the amount of air? Now, first of all, with this problem, um, let's make sure we know a couple, notice a couple things. They tell us the field is 120 yards we're measuring something with feet. So I do need to convert this 120 yards into feet first of all. So I'm gonna do that right here just to get that out of the way. Okay, 120 yards, I'm gonna multiply by um, the, by, by the, what the equivalent is of yards. We know that in our case here, three feet is the same as one yard, right? So if I multiply this out, the yards are gonna cancel. So 120 times three, it's going to be 360 feet, all right? So a soccer field is 360 feet long, okay? That's a key thing for us to keep in mind so I can compare the soccer, the soccer field with my measurement. 
Now the measurement he said was 358 feet and then 10 inches. So what we want to find out in terms of the air is the difference between 360 and compared to 358 feet and 10 inches, okay? So the difference here is not a lot, obviously, right? I know, if I remember that there are 12 inches in one foot, that tells me that I needed two more inches here to get up to 50, 359 feet, and I needed one more foot. So the difference is gonna be about one foot and two inches. In terms of an inch type of measurement, that's gonna be 12 plus two, a total of 14 inches there. So you do have to play with some conversions here in this problem in order to get it to the place you want it to be. Now it says to express the air as a percentage of the actual length of the football field. One of the key things here when we talk about this in class is that you wanna use the same units, right? I had to switch yards to feet to compare this feet to those feet there. But now I've converted my difference into inches, so I wanna compare inches to inches, all right? So I knew, for example, that I had 120 yards and I multiplied that by one foot over, or sorry, three feet over one yard to turn that into feet. Now if I want to turn that into inches, I know that there are 12 inches in one foot. So by doing this, I can eliminate the yards, I can eliminate the feet, and by doing 120 times three times 12, I'm left with something in terms of inches, which in our case here would be 4,320 inches. So I know the soccer field, is that many inches long. Why you'd wanna know that ever, I don't know, but in case you wanna measure it with an inch ruler, there you go. So now I wanna find the, the air as a percentage. Well, the air is gonna be the difference between the actual field length and what I measured, which is 14 inches, divided by, again, the actual length of the field, right? In our case here, these are all inches, so 14 inches, over 4,320 inches, notice my units are the same. When I do that and divide that, I come up with 0.00324. Now that's written as a decimal answer. So to turn that into a percentage, right? we're gonna move the decimal over to spaces here, and we're gonna end up with 0 0.324 as a percent, okay? And depending upon how your teacher wants you to do that, you could leave it like that, or if we want to the nearest thousandth, right, or nearest hundredth, sorry, this is tenth, hundredth. If you round that to the nearest hundredth, we look next door, that's a four, we're just gonna get rid of that guy there, and we can make that 0.32% if you want to go to the nearest hundredth. So that's the idea there. Took some extra conversion measurements to get that done, but the idea is we're gonna see what our measurement was and find out the difference between the actual, right? So you do your actual minus your measurement divided by the actual. And when we do that, it helps us find out what our percent error is gonna be. We do have to convert that to a percent, so make sure you do that step as well. Okay, let's look at activity number three. So activity three is called measuring your classroom and your teacher is going to tell you some items to measure in your classroom and you're going to keep those paper rulers going to figure out how long an object is going to be. So for my case here, I went ahead and measured my blue pencil, the one that I seem to be using in every single video here, right? So I took my pencil and I said, I'm going to measure my pencil and see how long my pencil is going to be, okay? So I put away the lead there. I set that down like that, and I said, well, using the centimeter ruler, I found out that if I went from the tip to about the end there and got to the closest uh, measurement, I'm at about 15, right? About 15 centimeters for my pencil. Awesome. When I use the millimeter ruler, which was this guy right here, and I pop, put that down like so, put that on the end, and go out to there, I noticed that I get out to, oops, I got, I have two little dots there, which means I'm at about 14 point, um, get this right, something like that. Yep, I'm at 14.8. Okay, so 14.8 for my pencil. So you measured your items in class, which is the first step, and once you measure it with your two rulers, then your teacher's gonna give you the actual measurement, okay, of what it might be. 
So you say, hey, teacher, what'd you measure? What's pencil measurement? Now in my case here, I told myself because I'm my own teacher here, I said, hey, the actual measurement is 14.8 centimeters. So I put the actual down there. Now I find the difference. So I do 15 minus 14.8, right? When I subtract that, the difference is 0.2, okay? My difference here is just simply zero because I measured it accurately. So we could say I got it right. Let's pretend, for example, let's just do this. Let's pretend that I measured this one and I thought it was 14.7. Maybe I was off a little bit. Let's do that just to have some fun. And that would make the difference 0.1. Now, as a percentage, as a percentage, we have to say here, I'm off here by 0.2 um, millimeters, right? And 0.1 millimeters. So I need to keep my units the same. All right, I need to keep my units the same when I do this here. So that's gonna be, again, my difference, which is 0.2 millimeters, divided by the actual. Now my actual, I wrote down as 148 centimeters. That becomes 148 millimeters. So I have to use the actual for the number down below. Over on this problem down here, I have a 0.1 divided by, again, my actual, which is 148. And these are millimeters, millimeters, millimeters. Okay, so now we do our little math. We get out our calculator and we do 0.2 divided by 148 and I end up with 0 0.00135. It's probably far enough for that one there. And down here I have 0.1 divided by 148 and I have 0 0.00067. So as a percentage, I move the decimal place over two and I have 0.1 one three five as a percent and over here I have one two I'd have point zero six seven as a percent that's my percent percentage uh, of error uh, in my measurements there so you take an object you measure it you get your actual amount from your teacher you find the difference then you divide the difference difference divided by the actual you get a decimal answer move that over to find out what your percentage is going to be and that is what we're looking for there. That's my percent error. So I was off by 0.135% on this one. I was off by less when I did the, minim the minim millimeter ruler there. And that's the idea. Okay? So just as a lesson summary here, let's flip to that page. Because that's really what the whole lesson is about there today. Okay? Is that we would say there is always at least a small difference between the actual length and a measured length, even if it is a microscopic difference. There's always a little bit of a difference when you're measuring something, okay? And that difference becomes what we call the measurement error. Now the measurement error is the positive difference between the measurement and the actual value. Measurement error is often expressed as a percentage of the actual value. I think one of the key words here is that we're always looking for the positive difference, okay? So we're gonna be finding the positive difference whenever you're looking for this stuff here. If you end up with a negative number, you gotta go back and do something a little different because it shouldn't be negative. All right, we're gonna pause there and look at today's homework. All right, homework for today. It says the depth of the lake is 15.8 meters. So that's my depth. That's how deep the lake is gonna be. It's going down 15.8 meters. Got it. Jada accurately measured the depth of the lake to the nearest meter. What measurement did Jada get? Okay, so we're getting to the nearest meter. Okay, so that means if I have a meter stick, right? And I'm doing my measurement like this. There's my meter stick. Right, and you have your different measurements, and here's maybe 13, and here's 14, and here's 15, and here's 16. Okay, now the actual measure we said was 15.8. That would be like something like close to there, right? It's a little bit more than 15, getting close to 16. The question's asking you, says the Jada accurately measured it to the nearest meter. Well, what's the nearest meter to 15.8? If this is where 15.8 is, the closest meter is going to be right here at 16. So his measurement was about 16, or his or hers, I'm not sure, probably hers, was 16 meters was the measurement that they did there. Okay, 16 meters. By how many meters does the measured depth differ from the actual depth? Well, because 
jaded at 16, we'll do 16 minus 15.8, because again, we want to find a positive difference. That becomes 0.2 meters, okay? That's the difference there, 0.2 meters. So if you want to express the measure air as a percentage of the actual depth, we would do our air, 0.2 meters, divided by the actual depth, which was 15.8 meters, okay? So 0.2 divided by 15.8, becomes 0 0.01265 and again it turns as a percentage we're going to move over two spaces and we end up with 1.2 um, and then I can do 1.265 let's go to the nearest um, hundredth again that's a five so I'm going to round that up to 1.27 and that is a percent there okay so those are your steps that's all you're being asked to do in this this uh, lesson today all right Let's look at uh, number two. It says a watermelon weighs 8,475 grams. A scale measured the weight with an error of 12% under, 12% under, that's, that's key. That means it's gonna be less than the actual weight. What is the measured weight? Okay, so what they're asking us here is, is something a little different, okay? We know we are under the actual weight by 12%. So. If 100%, think of it this way, if 100% was gonna be 8,475 grams, and we're under by 12%, that means we have minus 12, that means we have 88% of the water, we're measuring it at about 88% of the watermelon is what we're measuring. So it's 88% of 8,475 is what we're measuring it there. That's our measured measurement uh, difference there. In our case, we could say it's 0.88 times 8,475, 8, okay? So that's gonna give us our, our difference here, okay? It's almost like we're working backwards a little bit. So before, we had our, our difference, remember our difference amount, our difference, and we divided that by the actual to come up with a percentage. Okay, that's what we've been doing uh, right up above here. Because of what this is doing, we're starting in this case with our percentage is 12%. And we have the actual, which is 8475. We don't know the difference, we'll call that X for now. Okay, I turn my percentage into a decimal and I make that 0 0.12. And now to get the x by itself, I multiply 8,475 by 0.2. So x is going to be equal to 0.2 times 8,475. Okay. Now, that's what you would write down if you're just thinking about numbers. But the key thing that's different between this one and that one is what? It's 12% under the actual weight. So that under means I have to still go back and say it's 100 minus 12, which is 88%. So that is the tricky part with this, is the language. So that's the number that I should put right there. So let's go back and let's change this from 0.12 and 0.12 to what it should be, which is 88%, which becomes 0.88, okay? And I know I did that and you're probably saying, well, why did you do that? Don't mess me up like that, I know. But I want to see how important it is that even if you went back and started plugging numbers in, you have to look at this key bit of language here, 12% under, to help you know that, that is 88%. So there is some reading involved here. And so if you did 0.12 times 8475, you would find out the difference, which is great. That would give you the difference there. But it's not going to be, well, that gives you what you, what you measured. Um, or how far you're off by. So we're gonna measure this out here, or multiply this out. We have 0.88 times 8475, and we end up with 7458. Okay, so what was the measured weight was 7458, 7458, okay? If I did the 0.2 way, okay, this would actually give me the difference. If I did the point two way, point one two, sorry, point one two, the twelve percent times the actual eight four seven five, that's going to give me one thousand and seventeen. Okay, that's the twelve percent under. 
But if I take that number and I subtract it from my actual weight, 8,475 minus 1017, we end up with our actual weight, which is 7458. So it you can get there that way, right? It definitely works to do 0.2. You just have to do subtraction from what you end up with. This is your 12% your difference here. So that becomes your 100 minus your 12, which is there. We just did 100 minus 12 as the percent to turn it into 88%. So you certainly can go about it that, direct, that way. It's just up to you to make sure you know what you're coming up with and paying attention to what they're asking you to do. So just be careful with that one, okay? Look at number three. It's a similar idea, except now it says the thermometer gives a 2% greater reading, right, than the actual temperature. Okay, so we're going to be increasing by 2% over the actual. That's like saying I have 100% and I'm going to add an extra 2%, which means I'm at 102%. <laughs> okay, that's what we're doing, going back to some previous activities we've done this in this unit. So if the actual temperature is 325 degrees, what will the thermometer be reading? We know if the actual is 325, we're going to be reading by 2% greater than that. Okay. So I could, I could again do this a couple different ways. I could say that, well, that's going to be 325 times 2% greater means I do, think of it this way, it's 100% of 1, right, which is my 100% of 1, plus, back to our previous lesson, plus 2 more percent of the whole thing there. So that becomes 102% here times 325 and 102% written as a decimal is 1.02 times 325. That's going to give me a solution which in this case here would be 331.5 degrees. That would work just fine. If I wanted to do the 2% greater I could find out that and in our case here that 2% which is 0.02 times 325, this would be an or thing, right? 0 0.25, 0 0.02 times 325 is gonna give me 6.5 degrees. Now because it's 2% greater, I'm gonna add that onto my 325. Do this right here, 325. Yeah, uh, 0 0.0 and I have five, six plus five is 11, carry the one is three and three. So I have to add that back to my original because that's my 2% greater to my, my actual. So that's my 331.5 degrees. So both methods work. Just make sure you decide which method you want to use and proceed with, okay? Stay consistent. All right, if the thermometer reading is 76 degrees Fahrenheit, what is the actual temperature? So in this problem here, right, what's happening is well, it got a 76 degree rating, but we know that's 100, it's 2% it's greater than what it actually is. So we need to go back the other way, okay? So I can think about it like this. If over here, I got my actual, look at this one, look at this problem here. I did my 1.02 times the, re, the actual gave me my thermometer reading. In this case here, I have a thermometer reading of 76 degrees, okay? I don't know what the actual is gonna be, so I'm trying to find out, and I'm still gonna multiply that by 1.02. So if I wanna get that by itself, I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna divide both sides by 1.02. So this becomes 76 divided by 1.02 will give you, in this case here, 74.5 degrees. That's gonna give you the difference. So if you pay attention to what your terms are here and what these represent, you can then change your values around in future problems, okay? Let's move down to number four. At the beginning of the month, there were 80 ounces of peanut butter in the pantry. Now there is one third less, one third less than that. How many ounces are in there now? So we had the beginning, we had one, 100% times 80 ounces. And then we had, we added to that, well, less, so we're gonna subtract, sorry one-third less, so we're going to take away one-third times 80, okay? So this becomes one minus a third times 80, and one minus one-third is simply two-thirds times 80. 
Now I've done the work here. Now I can go back and take a look at my choices. And when I look at my choices, I can see right away that choice A is matching perfectly two thirds times 80 and we're set there. I can look at the other choices as well. I'm on the page, <laughs> I'm on a different page. I got one third times 80. Nope, I need two thirds. And we have this, which is no multiplication and that's adding it, which is a third more. So that'd be an increase, we'd say no. So these are not correct. All right, and number five, fill in the table for the side lengths and area, area of different squares. All right, so if our side length is three and it's a square, then we do three times three, three times three, or three squared, which is gonna be nine, or 100 squared, or 100 times 100, which is gonna be 10,000, and 25 times 25, which is 625, and S times S, which is S squared, S squared, like so. So is there a relationship between the side length of the square and the area of the square that makes it proportional? We would, in this case here, we would say, no, there's not. And the reason for that, and you need to explain this in your writing here, is that there's not a single number that we're multiplying by on, on the side length to come up with the area length, right? It's changing every time. Yes, that number is the same, we're being squared, but when you do an exponential value, it's no longer proportional. This means if I was to graph it out like so and make this as a graph, I wouldn't have a linear equation. It would look like this, it'd be a curve and go up like that. If it was proportional, it would go through the origin and be a, a linear equation like a straight line. This is not gonna work out that way because we're squaring it, we're meaning we're multiplying by a different number every single time, okay? So write that out, good job today, and we'll see you next time.